Hello, it's Mike from the Run Testers. I am here with Nick. Hello. We are going to be talking about two watches that I think it's fair to say we have spent a lot of time with um, over the months. Um, this is the Apple Watch Ultra. That is the Garmin Epix. Now, I think when Apple announced their uh, new watch recently, I think I think both of us probably agreed the most natural watch it seemed to kind of target itself against was the Phoenix, but I think particularly really the Epix, um, purely because it's got that color screen as well. Uh, the prices are very similar as well too. So fortunately, we, as I said, we've had a lot of time testing these watches now. We have run three of the majors with them as well. Nick has done two of them, I've done one. Uh, and what we want to do is give you a quick rundown of how we've got on with these watches, how they kind of compare in the kind of key areas. And yeah, give you our verdict on how the Apple Watch Ultra compares to the Common Epics and which one potentially might work best for you as a running watch. So let us get into it. All right, I think the first key area to talk about is design screen. So I'll just take, I'll just go through a couple of kind of key kind of headline things in terms of what we expect or we get from the designs of these two watches. So with the Apple Watch Ultra, we have a 49 millimeter case. We have got a tight, that's made out of titanium. We have three buttons, including that action button that Apple has now introduced on its watch for the first time. And there's removable straps, of course. Uh, the, and an always on retina touchscreen display. Now on the Epix 2, you've got essentially kind of a Phoenix type look with an AMOLED dis uh, display as well, which can stay always on like the Apple Watch. Uh, you've got a 47 millimeter case, physical buttons as well, like a kind of typical Garmin. Um, you've got removable straps and a stainless steel or aluminium case options there as well. So, okay, in terms, we know the kind of headline feature in terms of design. How are the watches, how, how are the watches being for you, Nick, in terms of living with, in terms of a design point of view? Um, they're probably my two favourite watches, I think, to live with on the market. Uh, I do think the Apple Watch has a sharper design when you're outside of running. The screen is, is better. Like The Garmin Epic screen is great and you know, outdoes all our sports watches, but this is a real smart watch and you get a really glorious screen with very colourful you know, watch faces and all that. So I think in terms of that, on that side of it, Apple is still winning out quite clearly. Like It has the nicer look. It's a smaller watch, even though the Ultra is bigger than the normal Apple Watch. It's very nice to engage with throughout the day. And then during sports... You know the Garmin's slightly easier to interact with, <laughs> so the five button design makes quite a big difference in terms of hitting lap. I find uh, on the run quite a lot. So Apple having the action button there actually is quite hard to press that action button without also pressing the other side button, which will then pause your run, which is incredibly annoying when you're just starting a 400 meter rep or something. But um, it's obviously an improvement on previous Apple watches having the extra button, but still not quite as user friendly during runs i find as the garmin epics too it's a much more natural i mean there's so much muscle memory of clicking garmin's in exactly the right way over the last 10 years but yeah the apple is being proven it's a nicer looking watch it's a nice watch to interact with day to day but on the run the garmin's are slightly easier to use i find how about you mike yeah, I would probably echo sentiments. I think the biggest uh, thing that I was a little bit concerned about, I think for both of these watches, is whether the case would be a bit too big for me. I've got pretty skinny wrists, so that's oh, kind of always my worry in terms of these kind of going with these bigger watches, and that's why watches like the 955 and smaller watches work better for me. But actually, with the Apple Watch Ultra, as though though it's quite big, it's light. I think and a, you know, key thing it's got that titanium case, and I think that does make a difference. The screen on the Apple Watch Ultra has been absolutely fine for me. I think I would echo the sentiments that I think for all day use, the Apple Watch Ultra screen feels a little bit nicer. Um, in terms of the kind of interaction uh, from that side of things, I think you know I'm used to using a Garmin, used to having those kind of array of physical buttons, and I think that just works nicer when you're out running. I think. You know, let's let's not uh, kind of beat about the bush in terms of that action button being on there. It's not a groundbreaking feature, but it's a new button on the Apple Watch, and that's great. But again, I found I accidentally would kind of knock it as well and pause it, and I, I found that slightly uh, like a bit of a nuisance personally. But I think actually, in terms of using them for runs, as I said, the Ultra felt big, but I, I actually really like the screen, and then it didn't feel uncomfortable. And I think the same with the Garmin Epics. It's very much like the Phoenix. You've got that but you've got that color screen. I think size-wise, actually, it works really nicely. So for me, I think there's definitely some strengths here for both watches. I think from a running perspective, I think they've been absolutely fine. And if you're worried about the bigger case on the Apple Watch Ultra, I don't think that's gonna be a massive problem, purely because the weight is very good, I think, for a running watch as well. Okay, so let's get into, I think, a key area for these two watches. I think that people might be choosing between them, and I think that's GPS performance and GPS accuracy. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, fortunately we were able to test these watches at uh, Chicago, at London Marathon, Berlin Marathon, but also, I mean, 
Lightning, I've been using it for my training runs. I also use it for Loch Ness 10K, both of these watches as well. So we've got a lot of data to kind of dig into. Now, the key things in terms of that GPS performance is that with the Apple Watch, you are getting a it's kind of dual frequency GPS mode, which is something we've seen in other watches already, I think from Coros, Amazfit, Huawei. So it's not a, a new feature, but it's new to the Apple Watch. And then on the Garmin, you've got its multiband mode, which is a top end kind of accuracy mode. So that you've got features here which do want to improve that GPS accuracy where it can be potentially spotty. So when you are kind of running around tall buildings or kind of tall wooded areas. So Nick, from that point of view, and you know, I use these kind of generally in their kind of top GPS kind of modes. How did you find they performed? First of all, in general, and then going into kind of your experiences at the marathons as well. Sure. So these have both got the best GPS in the market, the dual band GPS, like you say. It's only the Epic Sapphire, Sapphire versions, I think, um, which we've both had. So we've both had multiband mode in all of them. Uh, now, I've you know, always been very excited about multiband, really love GPS, but there are brands out there, like you say, have got it, where it does not make an appreciable difference. Like, I don't think with Coros or Huawei, their dual band GPS is actually any better than normal GPS. These two watches it is. The Epix, I think, is the most accurate watch I've ever tested in terms of GPS, uh, along with Garmin's other top watches that have it. And the Apple Watch Ultra, in general, matches up very, very well with it. I would say, in terms of total distance and the GPS tracks afterwards, the Apple Watch is fantastic. Where I have had a difference between the Ultra and the Epix is on-the-run pacing. I think it's all under the hood algorithms, something like that, but the Apple Watch is really weird about pacing for me. So every single kilometer split, uh, which you can now see in the you know interval split pace, is weird. It starts off very slow, slower than it should be, and then by the end of the kilometer, it almost matches the epics exactly. <laughs> so I did, I, did, for example, I did a park run, and every single K, the, the splits were exactly like, the epics measured 5.01 K, and the Apple measured 4.99 kilometers. So, you know, bang on. But every single K, the Apple Watch that I was running slower than I was until right at the end of the kilometer where it averaged down to the correct pace. So I find that really odd, and there's maybe some science there or something that can explain it, but it's even as simple as when you go out the door and your first kilometer, the lap pace is not the same as the average pace, which it, which it should be, right? You've, you, you're in the first kilometer. So that is my one big quirk there, and that happened in the marathons as well. So what I, in Berlin, uh, both watches were very even, so it's quite an, for a major, fairly easy GPS marathon Berlin because it's more ex, you know exposed than some of them. There are still high buildings and everything, but I had three kilometer splits. So you know every three kilometers, my watch would be do, recording a split, and they were very similar. But again, I did those longer splits because I knew the ultra was going to be weird about pacing until about you know 600, 700 meters into the split, and then it started to match up with the epics very closely. Uh, so that is a bit of a weird thing for me. Overall GPS track, amazing. Actual distance tracking, amazing. On both these watches, very similar. But then there is that slight problem. Where the Apple Watch does, I think, slightly outdo the Epics. In London, which is, has Canary Wharf, one of the worst places in the world for GPS, absolute nightmare. And actually, throughout the whole of the London Marathon, the Apple Watch was a lot better than the Epics. It was much closer to the distance I was running. It has the feature where Apple will use the pedometer to kind of estimate your pace when you hit a tunnel, that kind of thing. And I got quite even pace numbers throughout, whereas the Epics went bananas. Like, I was running with Jill pace and Jill and um, around Canary Wharf like it's going yeah you're running like very close to three minutes a kilometer and we, we simply weren't um, so I do think that is quite a nifty little thing and maybe under those high buildings it does quite well but overall although the GPS is accurate something wrong with the pacing on the watch for me and it's a very small thing it doesn't matter that much but it's enough to make me a little bit annoyed almost every run <laughs> so how, how have you found it Mike? I do you know what I've, I've... I found it pretty good. I mean, like, I think both of us, you know, we've used the most recent Apple Watches, and I think in terms of smart watches, it's probably one of the best performing in terms of GPS back shop. So I was really interested to see how the Ultra would perform. And, you know, I've used it, I use it in my kind of long math and training runs with the Epics on most occasions, actually. And I think I found it from that point of view, uh, you know, my part, my training runs around South London was absolutely fine. I used them both at Loch Ness. Um, the 10k before Chicago and the distance tracking was pretty much spot on on both of them pacing seemed very similar for me and then when I got to Chicago that's when I started to see a bit of disparity uh, in terms of the marathon I actually did the kind of 5k kind of run uh, the day before and I actually with the Garmin Epics, that the, the distance tracking point was definitely a lot further off. I mean, I was expecting issues from both of these watches, but it was definitely a little bit worse on the Epics, and that was kind of most a precursor of what I saw from the Epics on the on the day of the marathon as well. Pacing was fine for me in general, but there were just some weird paces in the Epics where it had me going very very quickly on a essentially a shakeout. 5k run uh, before like you know the big day, and on the on the marathon day. It became very apparent very quickly that the gun reference was very kind of far off from the kind of distance mark. And obviously I've looked at the data from the chip timing and also what I've got, you know, knowing very clearly that it was quite far. I looked into my kind of 
data and some of the pacing was very, very off, had me going very, very quick. Whereas I think the pacing on the Apple Watch Ultra was better. It still wasn't 100% um, perfect on the distance tracking, but it fared a lot better where, at a marathon where it's known for being very problematic in terms of GPS. So for me, I would say, I'd still say the, Ep the Epix is very good for GPS performance. On that day, the Chicago Marathon, the Apple Watch Ultra actually performed better for me in general. So, you know, it's it's a tough one. I think they both are very, very good. They're probably the best performing I've used in terms of those top ends kind of GPS modes where you may potentially have issues in certain areas. These are two of the best that I think I've probably used, but they've not been kind of infallible in terms of the performance that I've got. Now we will quickly get into heart rate accuracy. Now both of these both of these watches have optical heart rate sensors. You do have the ability to pair external heart rate monitors to them as well, so you have that option now. Nick, how did you find the heart rate monitoring performance on the Apple Watch Ultra and the Garmin Epix in general? Uh, so Apple Watch general has always been very good for GPS, I think, and this just confines to my other theory, which is basically yeah, smaller, lighter watches are better for tracking heart rate because they snip the wrist. The Ultra, as a result of being bigger than the Series 8, is a little bit worse than the Series 8 in my experience, and I would say it's maybe slightly better than the Garmin Epix, but most, most of the time they're fine, but they are going to be wrong probably at least once a run usually around the start of a run I find and if you're using them to guide training so with the Garmin it makes a much bigger deal because it feeds into all your training analysis so I did one run recently without a heart rate strap it went bananas and now my training readiness my you know my training load is all ruined for a few weeks because I'm in the red because it was really high the Ultra actually doesn't really matter that much if it's wrong in terms of that side of things it doesn't have that training analysis but if you're using it to guide training for both of these I would pair a chest strap and it is easy to do so yeah I think you know without having to go over what Nick said that's pretty much my experience of it I think the bigger Apple Watch has definitely had more issues than the smaller Apple Watches that I've used in the past the Garmin Epix has been pretty solid for me it's steady kind of pace kind of workouts I think these watches are absolutely fine but ultimately I've been using a heart rate monitor chest strap for most of my runs with the Garmin Epix and purely because I, you know, I want those other features that it fuels um, to, to be reliable. So I think ultimately I would say exactly the same thing. I've not seen anything really different. Heart rate monitoring is good, steady pace workouts. I think once you kind of up the intensity, you're gonna see issues ultimately. So yeah, I would say grab a chest strap as well. An area I think I want to we definitely have to talk about is navigation and mapping support. Now, in terms of what you've got here, um, now obviously with the Garmin Epics, you've pretty much got what you've got on the Phoenix in terms of that mapping support. So offline mapping, you've got uh, the kind of topo maps. Um, you have got the ability to upload routes. Um, they're preloaded on the Sapphire version that we have got. Now on the Apple Watch Ultra, you've uh, got features like uh, you've got kind of an improved compass mode and a backtrack uh, mode as well. You've got a massive reliance on third-party apps. I think we'd be fair to say in terms of if you want the kind of really good mapping and navigation experience. But Nick, how have you found using these two watches in terms of if you have to use maps, if you want to kind of follow a route, how have you found it? Uh, so I think Garmin is the gold standard for maps on the run. In general, they've got the best maps, they've got the best navigation tools, things like Climb Pro. It's pretty easy to get routes on. You can create routes on the watch. And of the Garmins, the Epix is my favourite to do all of that on because the screen makes reading a map more clear than the kind of transflective screens and things like the Phoenix and Forerunner. So yeah, that's the gold standard, and Apple doesn't meet that gold standard, um, which is fair enough. No other watch does, but the na native... Um, uh, navigation tools on the watch are, are I think bad because they're all confined to a separate app to the workout app and I'm not you know flicking between apps trying to backtrack my steps and all that you know you can even have things like Apple Maps or Google Maps on there but you're not using those during a run you want it baked in to make it easy so I would say if you are into navigation third party apps 100% commute work outdoors my big favorite app you can have very detailed data screen surrounding a you know a map with a route color map that kind of thing and it's getting better all the time in terms of the mapping features you offer you're still not really getting a flawless turn by turn experience from any app i've really tested yet but you can get very good mapping tools on the apple watch but it's not within the native worker app because it's kind of confined to this strange compass app so yeah garmin is 100 percent the best on maps from any brand by a long way and third party apps make up a bit of the shortfall here but it really depends how much you're going to use that feature i think yeah, I would agree. I, I think my, my take on the kind of things like backtrack and the kind of improved compass mode on the Apple Watch Ultra is it's it doesn't feel very running focused to me ultimately. That's what it comes down to really. And you know, off off Nick's very high recommendation, I used I download workout outdoors the app to kind of to use for my kind of running tests and ultimately it's a much better experience but ultimately you've got to pay for that i mean it's it's a small amount of pay but ultimately you kind of would hope that those features would be natively available on the apple Watch ultra the garmin epics for me has the best mapping experience it's not 
perfect by any stretch of imagination but in terms of if you're looking for a watch for kind of mapping support the fact that you've got that color uh, display there as well the level of detail you can kind of pick out from maps it just works the best in terms of any watch i view so if you are looking at kind of that kind of navigation and mapping support in terms of the running experience i would 100 percent say the garmin epics as well would that's the watch i would go for for that support too Now, a key area I think is worth highlighting is the kind of training features that you're getting built around running on these two watches. Now, there's definitely more data you're getting from the Apple Watch Ultra built around running. You are getting the ability to kind of build interval workouts. Um, you've got third party, again, you're looking at third party apps there as well. With the Garmin, you've got probably a lot more going on there in terms of the level of analysis. The kind of training apps that you can lean on and, and work with and work that Garmin can kind of work with as well and the kind of the the kind of insights you're going to get from that watch things like Garmin coach are there as well so there's definitely a lot more on paper it seems to be going on there but in terms of using the Apple Watch Ultra and the Garmin Epics as kind of training tools for runs if you're training for a marathon or training for a race they, how well do they cater for those things do you think Nick? Um, I think it's something that just they've not really bothered with the Apple Watch yet. <laughs> like there are some good third party apps, but even then they struggle with the hardware because the Apple Watch isn't taking certain readings as frequently as Garmin, especially overnight, things like heart rate variability. And um, this kind of stuff I think is very much to preserve the sports watches. And it just got, it's got really a lot better in Garmin this year with the things like training readiness, which I think is the perfect way to do this kind of thing, which is just a one-stop shop stat. How ready are you to train this day? And if you want to, dive into it you can see all the detail how was your sleep how was your recent training how has your heart rate variability been and we'll tell you why we're giving you the score but actually it's been very much on point for me whereas the apple watch is a tracker rather than a training partner in that sense i think um some apps do you know, athletic does quite a good job and you know it's that kind of thing they're okay these apps but they're not really providing the seamless experience as from a garmin and i think what's really been telling me i've loved using the apple watch ultra recently i've used it a lot i've been recovering after marathons i've had covid i've had a little injury i've been tracking you know my runs as i've come back from injury and then this week kind of kicked into gear again with training and I went, oh, I'm going to put the Epics back on because, you know, I want all that feedback to be feeding into that training system because that's what I will I mean, I don't live my life by this training analysis at all. I have a coach and that's really what sets things, but I like those numbers. They're useful numbers and it's not something that's really there on the Apple Watch yet. But yeah. Have you found any good apps yet, Mike? <laughs> no, I think the thing for me, I think the thing I found most interesting is, you know, I like a lot of people, I do like track sessions and I wanted to see how well, I think from my point of view, how those kind of work in terms of setup. And actually, I think in terms of building interval workouts on the, the Apple Ultra, I found it quite actually reasonably very intuitive to do, which I think in some watches it can be a little bit finicky to do on the watches themselves. But I think from in terms of, of a pure training kind of tool, Again, you really kind of have to do a bit of research on the Apple Watch Ultra to find an app that maybe can give you that experience. But ultimately, on the Garmin, that's what it's built for. And you know, even if you want the kind of advanced stuff, the advanced stuff is there. If you want the kind of more beginner-friendly stuff, that's there too as well. So if you, you know, if you're going into this watch with a, a, a different experience in terms of how you want to train or not knowing how to train, I think the Garmin can offer you more on that front. Whereas I think with the Apple Watch Ultra, there's maybe an opportunity there for Apple to do more here themselves. But I think at the moment it's not really there but i can see that they can potentially make it a better tra training partner but only, i think they're trying to tick a lot of other boxes as well with the ultra at the moment to try and make it cater for a lot of people as opposed to just being for runners from that point of view so i would say yeah as training tools i think it's a no-brainer i think the garmin epics would be the one that i would go for as well yeah, I, agree. I think the one thing they're going to struggle with is to do all that training analysis, you are going to have a more battery intensive experience. And that's why sports watches could do it a bit better. But I actually 100% agree with the structured workout builder. I think this is the best on watch structured workout builder I've come across from any brand. Garmin always do it in the app because it's a bit finicky on the watch. But the Apple Watch, you can really do very detailed structured workouts on the watch quite easily. Yeah, that's a big tick there. They nailed that. And you mentioned battery life, and battery life is obviously going to be a key area to talk about. Oh, people are going to be looking at, and I think people who know the Apple Watch know that you're going to make compromise in the battery life. But in terms of what you're getting now, um, you are getting 36 hours uh, from the Apple Watch uh, Ultra, which is more obviously than the previous Apple Watches. You're getting lower a lower power mode, which essentially you're still getting a very you're getting the same kind of sports tracking experience but you're you're getting some features turned off so it's not massively going to improve things I, I, or based on my experience and you've got a low power setting as well which gives you essentially 60 hours smartwatch battery life but it's not actually giving you more gps and heart rate it's essentially taking less readings in terms of that monitoring and then with the garmin you've got 16 days smartwatch uh, battery life 
anywhere from 20 to 42 hours of GPS battery, depending on what mode you're using. The multiband mode is gonna hit the battery a lot more. And that's the kind of mode I've been using mostly. Um, so how, first of all, how have you found the battery life performance? First of all, I would say not using the always on display, because I think that's going to be an interesting feature for people, because that's how people might use it. And then generally how you've used it in training and also for your marathons as well, Nick. So I, I, I almost exclusively use the always on display. <laughs> so I think these are very, very good watches, very sexy watches. I'm going to use them to their max. So I've had, you know, the max accuracy mode on at all times. Occasionally I'll have the always on on the Apple Watch if I'm using work outdoors, which doesn't use always on display for runs. But I generally have whacked the always on on for all of them. So that's what I'm going to really talk about here. Um, uh, and I would say Apple Watch Ultra is a big step up for Apple. Apple is always very conservative with its battery estimates. So it says 36 hours. This lasts 48 hours very reliably for me. It lasts me 48 hours even on days, including days that I've run a marathon and run the day before. So you can charge it the night before, go run your marathon. It's going to easily last you through the rest of that day on the marathon and the next day as well. Maybe not for using music during the marathon on the watch, which I didn't do, I will say that. Um, but yeah, two days, pretty much nailed on. And then when I was sick and not doing much running, the Ultra might push almost towards three days. Um, Epix 2, uh, I think, has been quite reliable throughout the year for me. It always in multi-man mode. Early on in the year, I was probably doing uh, 70, 80k a week, and it was lasting me five days quite reliably. In marathon training, that was up to about 100, 110k a week, and it was four days. For, again, very reliably. I would say on battery life, it wasn't at all a factor when I was choosing which one of these watches to wear recently uh, for me. Like two days is half the length of four or five days, obviously, but I've never found it hard to charge this watch at some point within the two days. Like it's always been, even when I'm showering, it charges very quickly. So whereas with the actual series Apple Watch, charging it every day is more of a pain. So although this has doubled the battery life, that is a big quality of life improvement in many ways. It wasn't anything that entered my mind when I was choosing between these watches. So I wasn't that bothered by it. How about you, Mike? I mean, I don't use it in, or I don't generally use it in always on display, just because I know, I mean, I can live without it in terms of that of that kind of feature and being able to see the, the screen all the time, but and knowing that it's probably going to get me a little bit more battery life. And in terms of the app, I think the key thing for me, the Apple Watch Ultra was, you know, I've, I've done marathons with the previous Apple Watches and they haven't really got me through. I mean, I'm running slower than it, but ultimately, like, I found using it, you know, using it from the beginning of the day, doing the, doing the marathon, it, it's fallen short. In terms of... Chicago, I turned, I put it on in the, at the beginning of the day. Um, I, ra I raced my, uh, I did my race. Um, I think I saw a drop off of kind of less than 20%, which is definitely a massive improvement in terms of performance I've seen with previous Apple Watches. So that was the key thing for me, seeing how it performed in a kind of race day where you, you really need to rely on it. Outside of that, I, you know, you're getting more than previous Apple Watches. And I think that is an improvement. I still wish it was longer. I, again, I'm not using it in always on. I'm not using it with the always on display, but uh, I think it, I feel like it should probably get up to a to a week. Whereas I think with the Garmin Epics, I can comfortably do a week's worth of training, and it will do that. I will say though that with I've, I have noticed with the Garmin Epics that when the training readiness features have started to roll in, and when I've been training as well, I do have seen a little bit more drop of a battery off. I do use it in multi band mode as well, so obviously that is if I'm using that constantly, that is going to knock the battery life. But I think in terms of the one that has the best battery life. I would say the Garmin Epix does offer that more uh, in comparison to the Apple Watch Ultra. And I think in the, in the kind of top end GPS battery life modes, I've seen similar drop offs in terms of the, the battery life. So if you're thinking about how these are going to perform in terms of races in, with that kind of highest accuracy option, I've kind of seen a similar kind of drop off in terms of that. But ultimately, these are watches that are going to last you a good few days, depending on how you use it. The, the Garmin Epix is going to last you potentially a week if you're not using that always on display. Uh, and that's kind of going to be the biggest way for me because I don't, I don't personally want to be charging every day, but I don't think you even have to do it at the Apple Watch Ultra. It's probably two, maybe three days potentially, depending on how you use it. I'd say one that Garmin does actually do quite well is it lets you pick the, gap, the GPS mode a lot more clearly so you really can extend the battery life during an activity. Now, you can turn on a low power mode in the Apple Watch, but actually it doesn't change how many GPS readings are. At the moment, there's a new low power mode coming that will reduce the frequency of readings, right? But um, the one that came with on the watch of us just turned basically the always on display off and a few other things like linking how often it links to your iPhone. But um, So that's the big thing with the, with the Garmin. You can turn to a different GPS mode if you want to finish a run and you're running low on battery. One that I want to quick say is the SAT IQ battery mode. You know the one that basically intelligently picks the satellites for you so it can give you the most accuracy at the, when you need it and save battery when you don't need it didn't really save any battery for me and it was slightly less accurate so i turned that off straight away <laughs>
We're down to a couple of last, last sections, but smartwatch features, let's quickly run through. Obviously, one only works with iPhones, the other one works with Android and iOS uh, smartphones. You'll get on the Apple Watch Ultra, you're getting everything you get on a normal Apple Watch. So LTE support, depending if you're gonna spend more, you're getting that big kind of third party app support, payments, notifications, you've got kind of these emergency features there as well, which you do see on Garmin's, uh, music support, um, I think great watch faces as well. The Garmin, you are getting kind of, you are getting connect to IQ support, but I don't think it's as slick, I think we would say, in compar comparison to the Apple App Store. Um, you're getting offline music, notifications, Garmin Pay, but I think the app, I, for me, the Apple Pay support works a lot better. It's probably the best payment system on a, on a wearable in general. So in terms of smartwatch use, how do these compare for you, Nick? Uh, and what's your experience being with them? Uh, I mean, the Apple Watch clearly wins on these things. Like Even the things that Garmin also has, like Garmin Pay, are just much better on the Apple I've, You know, I use Apple Pay daily. Garmin Pay, I would very rarely use. It was a pain. To, you know, trying to set it up even is very hard with the lack of support for UK banks. Like The music's actually pretty good on Garmin. It's, it's still more of a fact than the Apple Watch, which is how maybe... Is, Apple used to have a massive problem, I think, with music and podcasts where it would only load things at night or when it was charging, and now you can kind of tell it what you want on the watch specifically, and it was very vague before. It's much better, much better now, but you know, you're almost choosing between Spotify and Apple Music with these watches. Is, I think because Garmin links up really well with Spotify, Apple links up really well with Apple Music. You get a much it does link up with other things as well, but music I think is a bit of a wash. I say uh, the experience is slightly more slick on the Apple Watch, but it's very good on Garmin. Payments much better on Apple, and the App Store is the real killer, obviously, because everything that you don't like about the Apple Watch you can almost fix using an app. And there's so many apps, and everything on the Garmin, even if there is an app for it. It's, not great it's not that you know it's never slick is it on the app store no one's going out there and spending millions of dollars developing apps for garmin but they are doing it for apple because there are so many people with them so yeah the app store is a clear killer. it's a much better smartwatch in general i would use you know as a smartwatch much more garmin's kind of got those features but aside from music i don't think they're very good yeah i think the key things i use from a smartwatch basis notifications uh, i think some of the music controls uh, and i i would kind of delve into the apps as well for certain things but not for everything and i think in terms of a smartwatch this is what apple is is known for theirs is the better smartwatch and if you've got an iphone then you're going to get the best smartwatch experience the, the music kind of integration works really well the notification support is just second to none in comparison to everything i've tested i think with the uh Garmin, it's the fact that it's got touchscreen makes it a nicer smartwatch experience for things like the music features um the apps i mean the app store is just not really improved and i don't think many people are going to be using it from that point of view notification support is absolutely fine and again i think if you if you use spotify uh and you want those kind of offline kind of playlist kind of uh, kind of support then it's great for that as well and i think the notification support is good but ultimately if you want the best smartwatch then for me it is the apple watch ultra but the garmin does a good job it does a good enough job i think as a because a running kind of sports focused kind of uh, smartwatch as well Okay, we are into the verdict. We've talked you through all of the sections. I think we would say the key sections from a running point of view. Now, if you had to pick one, Nick, or you know, how, how do you think these fare in terms, of running, in terms of running experience? Would you go for the Apple Watch Ultra? Would you go for the Garmin Epics? And are you using these and how, you know, at all now as well? These, I think, are the two watches I would pick between as using in general. They're my two favorite watches. The Apple Watch is, you know, the benefits of it are clearly the screen, the general smartwatch experience, the slightly sleeker design, and all that. The Garmin, the benefits are a few little things really pick out for me. Things like training readiness and the slightly more you know tuned in GPS and pacing that's built around what bit about a bit more around running than it is on the Apple Watch. And I think that probably what sways me back towards the Epic at certain times. Like I say, I just started properly training again. At that point, I do want the Epics on. It really comes down as simple as that. But all, all other times, it wasn't you know, so much of a nutter and that kind of thing. And like, a, even, a, you know, a, a, I was, you know, I used the Apple Watch a lot as a very serious runner in the past. And as I was a, as a pretty very serious runner, the Apple Watch will do the job, the Ultra, I think. The Garmin just makes it a little bit easier. It feels more natural to me to use. And I think it is the better running watch all round. And then the other things, so it really just depends on what I'm looking for at the time. You know, if I, every time I step back a bit, I'm just running, you know, more casually, enjoying it, still running loads, doing guided workouts and all that kind of thing. Apple Watch Ultra, I prefer because it's better design. It does all those things really well. But yeah, when I'm really honing in and working hard, I want the Garmin for things like readiness, the very precise GPS. Those are probably the two things that really kill it for me. How about you? Yeah, I think the my experience uh, Chicago Marathon with these two watches really kind of changed my opinion of where I was thinking about. So we were, were thinking about this video for a while. We really wanted to get those tests done to really give a sense of where I'd sit. Ultimately, uh, you know, it really surprised me the experience I had with the Apple Watch Ultra in general from a running point of view. I knew it was getting better with the Series 7 and the Series 8. 
it's very good on the Apple Ultra. But ultimately, when it's come down to it, and I've finished testing these watches, I've got to the end of the testing, I've reached for the Garmin Epics again, purely because I think, from a running perspective, it, it for me, it does what I want it to do. And I think in, in terms of the GPS performance, it's good enough. The batch, the batch life is a big sway for me. Um, I think the fact that the, the battery life is good enough for a week i that that is a that's kind of a big kind of deal breaker for me but i think the apple Watch ultra in terms of that performance has massively improved from that point of view and i think if you were looking at the apple Watch ultra for as a running companion it is definitely a lot better but in terms of the extra analysis and insight that's already there in place on the Garmin Epics that you can kind of tap into without having to jump into the app store and try and work out, or maybe we'll listen to one of our videos and find out what you have to get um, to put on there to make it a better running watch, um, then I just think it's 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 easy. It was a no-brainer for me when I kind of finished testing these, I picked up the Garmin Epics naturally just because I just think from it, when I start training again, I start doing my runs again, it just it just works a little bit nicer from a running perspective. But that, you know, that's no disservice to the Apple Watch Ultra. And I think it's really important to say that it's this using the Apple Watch Ultra has really kind of shown me that Apple Watch care about making this a better watch for runners. They've still got work to do. They absolutely still got work to do, but there is massive progress here. And I think that was probably something we probably agree on that, that, that definitely feels more running focused. And I feel the next couple of watches, the non ultra watches and the next ultra watch that they do are going to be better running watches. And they'll be, they'll be taking this feedback and they'll be looking at it and we want to improve this. And I think this is a good foundation. There's good foundation. I think in a couple of generations time, we might be having a different conversation about these two watches. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a really good watch. Actually, and if Garmin hadn't released the Epics this year, this would be the watch I'm wearing right now because it is such a nicer experience having the AMOLED screen. The only other thing we didn't touch on, which actually is a huge factor from time to time, is um, you know I've been traveling a couple of times recently. The maps navigation on the Epics are another reason to get it over this. And I don't do a lot of traveling. I'm a very boring person. I stay home almost the entire time. But if you are someone who is moving around a bit more, jet setting, going to you know lovely trail running areas, that's another huge reason to get the Epics because the mapping experience is so good. Again, the Apple Watch will have it with third-party apps. Everything You can almost do everything on this watch. It's just going to make you a bit work a bit harder to do it, and you don't necessarily want to do that. The Epics is all right there. So if, if that is a big factor for you, traveling around a lot, Epics is a huge winner on the navigation front. Cool. So there you have it. The Garmin Epics is you're going to find that on mine and Nick's wrist now. So that is the watch that kind of wins out. But ultimately, as you can see from our video, the Apple Watch Ultra has managed to you know be a very impressive watch to run with and to race with over those three kind of majors that we did as well so there you have it that is our take on how the apple watch ultra compares to the garmin epics 2 now if you've got any questions about these watches and about any of the testing let us know in the comments as always like and subscribe hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos and yeah we'll see you for the next run testers video to loop